Hello, and welcome to episode 4 of Mind Gamer Hawken. As you may have figured out from the title, in this episode, I'm going to teach you 8 bits of fancy footwork designed to make you more unpredictable and harder to hit. These are a bit more complicated than your basic dashes and boosts and 180s, but that's the whole point. They chain together actions in ways that people are not accustomed to, and take advantage of the unconscious assumptions and expectations that every player has. The first move I'm going to show you is called the L dodge. We've seen it before in the previous episode, and it's one of the easier advanced moves to pull off. All you have to do is face the enemy, dodge in one direction, and then immediately boost forward. This allows you to keep moving quickly even after dodging, when normally you would have to slow down for a moment while your dodge recharges. This is especially good for closing in on the enemy while avoiding rockets or grenades. Wait until you see them shoot it at you, dodge, and then boost towards them. You can chain multiple L dodges together for a safer approach from long range. It helps to dodge even when your opponent's explosive weapon is on cooldown, since you still make them have to readjust their aim for a bit and miss a couple of shots. Over the course of a fight, these small advantages can add up to the difference between victory and defeat. Here is a clip of the L dodge in action. Notice how my opponent is still shooting at the place that I was, even though I'm already 10 feet to the left and closing in fast. This ability to change positions and directions before an opponent can react is the strength of the L dodge. Another form of the L dodge, which I prefer to call the R dodge, named after the shape of the path that it traces on the ground, involves boosting towards the enemy first and then dodging. This move serves a slightly different purpose than the normal L dodge. Whereas the L dodge involves reacting to your opponent's explosive weapon and then aggressively attacking during its cooldown time, the R dodge is meant to bait the opponent into using his explosive, and then preemptively avoid it. Nothing is more tempting of a target for a tow rocket than an enemy that's boosting right at you. Even somebody that's standing still has the option of dashing away or jumping after you shoot your rocket at him, but normally we think of someone that's already boosting as being locked in his path. Obviously this isn't true, but even high level players reflexively act off this assumption. So when you boost forward and then dodge right away, you'll trick your opponent into shooting your rocket at the wrong location. Knowing when to dodge is the most important part of this maneuver. If your enemy is already facing you, and you don't know whether or not their tow or grenade or missile barrage is on cooldown, then dodge as soon as possible, or, if you're far enough away or have quick enough reflexes, whenever you see them shoot it. If they're not facing you, then watch their mech's torso very closely. Continue boosting towards them, and dodge just as they turn to face you. The moment someone centers their crosshairs on you is when they're most likely to fire a tow, especially if you have the jump on them and they know they need to catch up. Dodge too early, and you're not really evading anything at all, because they're not shooting at you yet. Take a look at this clip to see what I mean. I get the drop on this guy, and I see that he's facing away from me. I calmly stand still, and wait until I see the full screen and guns pointed at me before I dodge. As a result, he misses his rocket, and everything goes according to plan. Here I'm in a fight with a brawler, when suddenly he manages to get some space on me. This is bad. As a scout, I want to be either rubbing chassis with him, or far away. Middle ground just means I'm an easy target. So, to bait his rocket and close the gap, I boost towards him and dodge to my left, evading his shot and staying alive. For a little longer, anyways. In this next one, I'm a berserker up against a Fred. If we trade blows, he'll come out on top because he has more health. So, I do the same thing. Boost, dodge, evade the rocket, feel good about myself, and then chase him down as he runs. Moving on, let's take a look at the dodge jump. It's another move that changes together actions that normal pilots don't usually see used in conjunction. Like most of the moves in this video, it is meant to simultaneously bait and avoid your opponent's explosive weapon. Be careful though, you can't jump in the middle of a dodge, so if you hit your jump button too early, nothing will happen. A variant of this move is the boost jump, which simply replaces the dodge with a boost, but still has the same idea behind it. The benefit to this is that a jump can come out of a boost at any time, so you can more naturally time your jump. The downside is that you end up closer to your enemy than when you started, though this isn't always a bad thing. 
Let's take a look at some clips of the dodge jump and boost jump in action. Here I've taken down one enemy and I notice another one approaching. I sprint forward so that I show up on his radar. He's expecting me to boost around the corner soon and wants to fire a rocket as soon as I do. Knowing this, I jump instead, using my momentum to carry me forwards and sailing over the toe that he had prepared for me. I pick a fight with another Fred. I dodge his first toe, and as soon as I do I start a countdown in my head to when he'll be able to fire another one. As that time approaches, I throw in a side dash, but I notice he hasn't used his toe yet. To keep the dodge going, I had a jump to the end, and this is enough to move me just out of harm's way. This next move, the circle strafe, is, without exaggeration, one of the most important forms of movement in any multiplayer action game. It's not a very complicated maneuver. Keep your crosshair centered on the enemy and strafe in one direction, essentially using your mech to outline a circle with the enemy at the center. From your point of view, your enemy will always stay in the center of your screen, making him an easy target for you to shoot at. From his point of view, you'll constantly be moving, so he has to keep turning to track you. What this allows you to do is keep your aim centered on your foe while doing the most to make yourself harder to hit. Keep in mind though that you need room to do this effectively. It's not as viable in narrow hallways where there are walls in your way and you won't have the space to go all the way around your opponent. In that case, you might want to practice a more advanced version of the circle strafe. In Hawken, even with the capped turning speed, you'll never be able to circle strafe forever. Mechs move slowly enough that, eventually, your opponent will manage to turn to face you as you circle around him. At this point, as before, your enemy will want to unleash a rocket as soon as they can. In this case, you should use your dodge before or just as their crosshairs fall on you. Always dodge opposite the direction that your enemy is turning. For example, if they're turning to face your right, dodge to your left. Cut across their line of vision so that they have to change the direction of their turn to continue tracking you. For your opponent, this readjustment takes time and often causes them to mess up. Additionally, your enemy will tend to try and aim ahead of you to compensate for the explosive's travel time, so dodging back the way you came is better than potentially dodging forward into their rocket or grenade. Here are some clips of both basic and advanced circle strafing in action. In this first segment, you can see how simply walking arcs around an opponent can make him disoriented. When they turn to face where my flak shots came from, I'm already somewhere else. Circle strafing is especially effective against large, slow opponents, who can't turn as quickly and have a harder time tracking you as you dash to and fro across their field of view. It also becomes more effective the closer you are to an enemy, because any set distance covered then translates into a larger turn angle as the circle gets smaller. You can see in this clip that, at point blank range, I can essentially go from being directly in front of an enemy to standing directly to his right, in a single dodge. In this last clip, you can see me put it all together, staying in close, dodging only when he turns to face me, and getting the kill while taking minimal damage, while also positioning myself for a quick escape. Now consider a situation where you're behind cover, and your opponent is around the corner a ways. He knows you're there, and you know he's there. You want to step out of cover and shoot at him. The problem is, a smart opponent will aim his toe or grenade to catch you in the splash radius whether you step out or dash from cover. One particularly neat way I've come up with to solve this problem takes advantage of the fact that your mech has inertia while boosting, so you can actually boost in one direction, turn to face another, and still slide in that original direction for a few fractions of a second, so long as you're still holding down the boost button. This is what it looks like.
This allows you to start a forward boost and then transition into a side dodge that travels in the same direction, essentially creating a straightened out R dodge. This is an extra long dodge that I call the dodge, uh, or the dodge EX, whatever you prefer. Performing one of these around a corner can quickly give you that little extra distance you need to put yourself out of your enemy's explosive splash range, but the move itself is much more versatile than that. You can also use it to quickly escape into cover or chase around corners. Be creative. If you do it right, it should look like this. Here are some clips showing some situations where this move can come in handy. I spot a weakened opponent just as he jumps off the top level of Origin. I lose him for a moment, but I track his dot and I notice that he's down there, probably repairing or hiding just around the corner. I need to get to him fast, before he gets away or before he gains back too much health. The moment I drop down, I know he'll see me because of the third person camera you get when you repair. So I land, immediately boost forward, an EX dodge right around the corner, catching him while he's still repairing for an easy kill. Fast forward a bit, and here you'll see me use it again, this time to cross open ground, run past cover, and dash out the other side where I have the flank on another enemy. In this one, I use the dodge EX to come around a corner much faster than my opponent expects me to. After finishing up one duel, I see an enemy approaching from my left. I'm a sitting duck out here in the open, so I make a break for the nearest cover I see. I know he's going to shoot a toe at me when I get there, so I transition into a dodge EX to distance myself from the splash. Finally, in this last clip, you can see just how powerful this move is when used to chase. I catch a target in the middle of a repair, but he quickly jets off into the narrow corridors. I know that as I pursue him, I'll only have a fraction of a second to get a shot in before he disappears from view again, so I use the dodge EX to make sure that when I round the corner, my guns are already facing in the right direction. Modifying the dash EX slightly yields a different move with a different purpose. When you're attacked from behind, oftentimes the first thing you want to do is face your attacker, both to see what you're up against and to shoot back. However, you also want to keep the option open to retreat if it turns out that you're outnumbered or outgunned. To this end, the normal way of turning around, using Shift S to do a quick 180, isn't always the best option. There's no such thing as a back sprint in this game, and walking backwards only means you'll die facing your attacker. If you need to run, you have to do another 180 before you can start boosting away. However, as before, you can take advantage of inertia and the fact that you can turn while boosting or dodging to perform what is essentially a running 180. This gives you the best of both worlds. You get to spot your opponent and assess the situation, but also position yourself to quickly duck behind cover if that's what you need. To do this, you first boost towards your potential cover. As you near the corner, turn 90 degrees to face the wall while still holding down boost. As soon as you finish your turn, let go of boost and perform a side dodge, just like you do in the dodge EX. However, during this dodge, continue turning towards your attacker. If done correctly, it should look something like this. Now you can return fire, and if it gets too hot, you're one dash away from easy cover. Here are some clips of the moving 180 in action. At the start, you can see the indicator that tells me that I'm taking fire from my periphery. I'm in the open, and if I turn around now, I'll probably get creamed. So instead, I boost towards cover, and as I do, I perform a moving 180, catching a glimpse of my opponent just before I disappear from view. I notice that he's at full HP, so I decide not to go back that way, opting instead to push ahead where I get an easy double kill before I'm finished off. In this one, after finishing off my opponent, I hear gunshots and see a red dot behind me on my radar. I do a moving 180, and this positions me such that I can fire off a toe at my enemy, and then immediately dodge behind the wall. Finally, I'm going to teach you the duck under. Let's say that you and an enemy are dueling when your enemy jumps up and starts hovering. Either he's trying to get a better angle on you for a toe rocket, or he's desperately trying to throw off your aim. Your first idea might be to circle strafe him. Now that he's in the air, he can't make any sudden changes in direction, 
so he's an easy target for circle strafing. While this is a good tactic, you can do one better and take advantage of two limitations to the mechs in Hawken. First, they cannot look straight down or straight up. Second, they cannot do instant 180 degree turns in midair. Keeping these two things in mind, you can actually just boost under your hovering opponent, do a 180 degree turn, and shoot them in the butt while they have to slowly turn around to face you. When they do, simply duck under them again. Rinse and repeat, until you kill them, or until they run out of fuel. In most FPS games, if you have the option of going around someone or above and below them, always choose the latter. It makes you a lot harder to track. If you circle around someone, all they have to do to keep you in their sights is turn one way or another. This can be done in one smooth, easy movement of the mouse or joystick. If you go above them though, they have to look straight up, then turn 180 degrees, and then look down again. This is physically much more difficult to accomplish, and much easier to screw up. Here are some clips of the Duck Under in action. In the first one, I'm attacking another target when my opponent jumps me, in this case, literally. I quickly dash under him and turn around just in time to see him miss a toe and die to another scout who's joined the fight. You don't always have to use the Duck Under offensively, though. It's perfectly functional as a purely evasive maneuver. In this case, I mismanage my heat generation and overload. When my opponent jumps into the air, I take the opportunity to boost under him, do a 180, and then boost under him again, running him in circles until my weapons are ready to use. And finally, this last one shows the sort of ideal situation for you to use it. He floats, I boost under, 180, and finish him off while he's still turning. For all the moves that I've shown you, in real games, you'll never really get to do them as cleanly as you've seen here, but that's just fine. Moreover, you shouldn't stick too closely or rely too heavily on any of them. They're meant to be smart plays to give you a leg up on a fight, but if you want to be a truly skilled player, you need to figure out how to play around with them and adapt them to best suit the situation at hand. All these moves that I've showcased are highly versatile and can be used in many more ways that I haven't shown. That said, it is my earnest wish that I've managed to teach you something new with this video. Be sure to check out previous episodes if you haven't already, and keep an eye out for the next one. See you on the battlefield. Wolfie, out.